Hey, so I've just spent three days in Austria on a top secret private tour of head headquarters. And in this video, I'm going to show you as much of it as I can. So stay tuned as you're going to see the head archives, how a tennis ball and ball can is made. And you're gonna watch me have the pro player treatment testing out heads, new trainers, and rackets. And if you watch all the way through to the end, you'll see which head racket I hit my biggest serve with. Let's go. So I've always wanted to visit Head Headquarters. They've actually invited me to film some content for them for their upcoming 2024 ranges of rackets, footwear, and clothing. So I'm super excited as I'm gonna get to see and test these new ranges before anybody else in the world. Obviously, I can't show you all of the footage that I got as there are lots of things that are top secret. But what I will do in this video is tell you as much as I can about them and give you some sneak peeks. So I finally made it to the hotel. Now, Head HQ is situated in a place called Kennelbeck, which is near a small town called Bregenz in the northwest of Austria. Now, it wasn't easy to get to. I had to get an hour and a half plane from Gatwick to Zurich before getting on a two hour train and bus to Bregenz but I know it's gonna be worth it as this is the itinerary for the next three days. Now, I won't go through it now with you. Instead, I'm going to take you with me. Let's go. After a quick breakfast, I got picked up in a head van to head over to Kennelback, which was about 10 minutes away from the hotel. As we arrived, I could see that the headquarters was set in a pretty traditional building, which for many years has been a hub for work in Canelback, which is a pretty small town. My first stop on my three day tour was with Dennis, who is the global business manager. Dennis has had years of experience working with top athletes. As before his years working with Head, he actually used to work for Prince. Now, Dennis gave me a really detailed tour of all of the strings that Head currently provide and explained that Head have had their most successful year to date with top players using their strings. In fact, there are five players in the top 10 that are using head rackets and four of them that are using head strings. Sinner and Zverev both use Hawk Touch. Rublev plays with Lynx Tor. He actually recently moved onto that from Luxalon earlier this year. And Taylor Fritz also uses Hawk Strings. He actually recommended to me that I try Hawk Strings as my favorite string currently is Head Lynx Touch. I use this in my Head Speed Pro, but Dennis said that actually most people tend to prefer the Hawk Strings in the speed lineup. After his detailed talk through the strings, he actually showed me some top secret pieces of kit that are due to come out in 2024 and 2025. Now, obviously I'm not able to show you any of that here, but what I will say is I'm pretty excited, especially for the lineup of bags that are yet to come. Sorry to interrupt, just a massive thank you to everybody that subscribed to the channel so far, as I've just reached 50,000 subscribers, which when I started the channel, I never dreamed of getting this far. So a massive thank you. Back to the video. After meeting Dennis, we headed over to meet Ralph, who is the director of R&D at Head. Now, you may recognize Ralph as I recently made a video of him showing me a tour of the production process of a racket. Now, if you haven't seen that video and you're not aware of how a tennis racket is made, then I definitely recommend that one as it blew my mind. But yeah, Ralph is really, really passionate about his job. He's been working with Head for many years and has tons of experience in the rackets industry as he used to work for Vocal. Ralph was showing me around the archives, which housed hundreds of rackets from Head's very first racket all the way through to today's rackets. It also showed rackets that never got released from Head, various prototypes and unique technologies. In fact, you can see here, this racket's got two handles and this racket has two layers of strings. Now, there are a couple of players on tour that have played with these rackets, so let me know in the comments below if you can name them. After spending a good hour looking through all of Head's archived rackets, we then went over to the lab with Max Bauer, who is product manager for Performance Rackets. Hey guys, so I'm here with Ashley today and you know, we talked before about impact feel that it becomes more and more important. So we are kind of on a mission to identify the holy grail of a racket sound. Sound engineering becomes more and more important to us. We try to fine tune every single detail of the product and right now we have a little project where we actually judge sounds and try to identify which sounds are the most preferred ones and then kind of reverse engineer to bring that into the record. So yeah, we can have a bit of a go. Max gave me headphones and played through tons of different sounds of balls being struck using different frames and I had to try to guess which ones they were. To be honest, this was really, really tough as the differences were so subtle. But what I could tell the difference between was the rackets with the slightly bigger heads and the more open string patterns compared to the more dense string patterns. 
Next up, I headed upstairs as I was shown through how tennis balls and tennis ball tubes are made. So I'm Mauro Pinafo and I'm product manager for tennis and paddle balls. And we're going to be looking at how to build a tennis ball. Yeah, so basically you start from these two basic materials, which are uh, uh, natural rubber and synthetic rubber. They are mixed together with some additives in a big uh, machine. That This is put in a mold and with heat is pressed. And after that we get the half uh, core. After this, the two cores are glued together, sanded, and some glue is put on the surface. A machine, this is an automatic process, a machine applies the felt on it, on both sides, and then manually it is checked the quality and if the seams are cut, the logo is applied, and then you get the tennis ball. Basically, tennis balls, they all look the same, they are all round and all yellow, we say here, just joking. No? But uh, when you change a little bit the quantity, the percentages of these materials, the fillers, the quality of the felt, the pressure inside, the thickness of the wall, then you get the different types of balls and the different different performances. This is the, the object where we start. Then it is uh, heated and inflated with pressure. It expands in a mold and we get this shape. So the, the mold has the shape of the can and we try to use as less plastic as possible to be more sustainable, of course. Next up, we headed into the room next door where we had a tour through all of Head's 2023 and 2024 footwear. Head are actually releasing two new high performance shoes next year, which I got to try both in the playtesting later on in the video. As I mentioned before, I can't show you or tell you too much about them, but what I will say is one of these shoes in particular I absolutely loved, not just for its performance, but the way it looked as well. I got my feet measured and went through all of the tests that the professional athletes go for when choosing a shoe. There's a sheet that players fill in to talk through comfort levels, if there's any pressure points within the shoes, and they do all of this before they go on court and after they go on court as well. The final part of day one, I got to meet Wolfgang, who is the director of design at Head. He talked me through the design process of the upcoming speed and boom. Wolfgang actually used to work in the cycling industry, so a lot of his concept and mood boards come from that background. As somebody that's quite arty and creative, I absolutely loved seeing this design process and how different colorways on rackets come to life. Again, he showed me some of the 2024 and 2025 racket lines, and all I can say is they definitely pop. So just got back from a very busy first day and had the best time speaking to all of the different product managers and learning all things about how rackets, footwear and balls are made from the design process all the way through to shipping them out. Now I think you'll find tomorrow even more interesting as I'm off to the tennis courts to test out the new head speed and the new head boom lines on a smart court. I think it's called a trackman court which is basically going to track all of the stats. It's going to give me a really in-depth look at my game using different frames and one really nice touch head gifted me this bag so as you can see it's got my initials on there and inside there are a few goodies so I've got lots of clothes which you'll see me wearing on court tomorrow and this really nice drinks bottle as you can tell head know me pretty well by now with my black on black color theme but um yeah I'm looking forward to putting this gear on and putting all of the equipment to the test tomorrow I'll see you there so day two was all about testing heads new equipment we drove over to an indoor tennis center about 15 minutes away as the weather was dreadful and after a quick warm-up I was first testing out the two high performance shoes that Head are releasing. When testing them, I first put on the 2023 models before testing out the 2024 models. Both of them are definite improvements on last year's models, not just in performance and playability, but looks as well. To be honest, in the past, I've never really considered wearing Head tennis shoes, but these definitely swayed me. While the footwear team were going through a questionnaire on how the shoes performed with me, the rackets team were setting up the Trackman device, which is a really high-tech piece of kit which is usually used in golf and when calibrated to a tennis court can pick up some really detailed stats. The ones that they were going to be using for me were speed, spin and accuracy or placement. Today I was going to be testing out the new speed line. Not just the pro that I play with, but all of the rackets in the speed line. I were to go through five set drills with each frame. Inside out forehand, working on shape over the net. Down the line forehand, working on hitting flatter and more aggressively. Cross court backhands, first serves and second serves. Now on each of these drills, I would have to hit between 15 and 20 repetitions so that the trackman can get a decent amount of data. This testing went on for at least an hour and a half. And as you can imagine, after the footwear testing, I was pretty tired. 
but I gave it my all and tried to keep the intensity high all the way through the testing to make it as realistic as possible. I'm going to make another more detailed video on this process later on showing you through all the stats but what I will say for the purpose of this video my biggest serves were with the Speed Pro as expected. My average first serve speed was 182 kilometers per hour and my top speed was 184 kilometers per hour which considering I haven't played much for the last year or so I was pretty happy with. So after that big day on court, my body is broken and stupidly, I didn't stretch. So I'm about to head to the gym to do a little bit of a stretching routine so that I can at least pick up a racket tomorrow. As tomorrow, I'm going back to be tested on the Trackman again with the head boom range. So really looking forward to seeing how my stats compare. As you saw, I served pretty well with the Speed Pro. Will the boom perform better or worse? Let me know in the comments below. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go to the gym get some rest and I will see you back on court tomorrow. So as I mentioned, the final day involved exactly the same process as yesterday, but testing out boom rackets. I can't share any of this footage with you as the boom isn't released yet, but I will be making a full review of the boom later on in March. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see that one. Thomas and Pedro sat me down in the office and showed me through a presentation going through all of my stats. This is the process that they go through with their Pro Tour players when it comes to deciding which racket is best for them. So I was really privileged to have this treatment. Yesterday, my average serve speed was 182 kilometers and with the Boom Pro, it was 187. My high speed was 189, which to be honest, I was gutted as I wanted to reach 190 and felt that I had that in me. But to make the test fair, I had to stop as if I did more, it would sway the stats from yesterday. After testing the booms and getting my results, my last couple of trips before heading home were to the factory, which like I said, I've actually posted this video already. I'll add a link to that in the description below. And finally, I popped in to say hello to the sportswear team who gave me two of their catalogues. And just like the footwear, in the past, I had never considered wearing head sportswear. As to be honest, it was always been quite traditional and a little bit boring. But looking through their 2024 catalog, I'm a big fan of what they're doing. And I'm definitely gonna be purchasing some of their clothes. So I hope you enjoyed coming with me to head headquarters. If you've got any questions about the upcoming products, let me know in the comments below. As although I couldn't physically show you them I might be able to share some insights with you thanks as always for watching I look forward to seeing you in the next video take care